Randy Robinson here at Life Today TV with my special guest, Father Jonathan Morris. And you may recognize him from Fox News, where he is a contributor. And uh, you may not know that he was a consultant on the film, The Passion of the Christ, which had to have been just an amazing experience. And he is also the author of the new book, God Wants You Happy. Thank you for being with us here. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Now, before I get into the book, and I do want to talk about that, what was it like to be on the set of that film? Fascinating two years of my life. Um, I worked on the set. It was most the film was mostly um, shot in Rome, also in another small town in southern Italy called Matera. But I was a theological advisor, trying to make sure that we got the gospel story straight. Uh, but also, there was so much controversy about the about the film, yeah. whether it was anti-Semitic, whether you know there was a hidden agenda. But I, it was a wonderful experience for me, personally, as a Christian, to encounter the gospel in real life, in flesh. And I think that's what the uh, the story told. And I, it obviously touched a lot of people's lives. Yeah, it comes through. It's a, it's a powerful film. It's not just a movie. It's kind of, a, I think, an experience for believers. It is. It yeah. was for me. Do you keep in touch with Mel Gibson? I do. I do. How's he doing? Uh, well, there's some very public things that are known. <laughs> that uh, he's gone through a very rough patch in his life. And, but I know one thing for sure is that his interest and desire in making the film The Passion of the Christ was godly, it was holy, it was in response to a personal invitation that he had experienced to put on film in a personal experience of The Passion of the Christ that he had experienced. And God blessed it. And I think uh, God never abandon, abandons his children, even when we abandon him. And uh, so I have no doubt whatsoever that Mel's going to come right back into uh, the loving hands of, the, of, of, of our Father. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. You know, God has a track record of using imperfect people for his perfect will. That's right. So. And imperfect things in our lives to bring us closer to him. Yeah, yeah. About your book, God Wants You Happy, and, and, and you know, I got to say that I'm very interested in the topic with, with uh, my book with a very similar title. Uh, so I'm curious to kind of hear where you're, uh, where you're going with this, this idea sure. and what you're trying to accomplish. You, know, you mentioned at the beginning I do a lot of work with the Fox News Channel and other secular um, media outlets. And on those venues, I'm able to help people take baby steps of understanding ethical issues, social issues, but we know that those baby steps toward truth um, don't lead us to the fulfillment of our being that God wants. And I think the fulfillment that God wants for us is knowing that we're loved and experiencing the love of God and learning to love. And that's when we flourish as a human being on every single level of our, of our being. Uh, when we're flourishing intellectually, it means when our minds are clear. Right? When we're flourishing emotionally, it's when our feelings are lined up with truth, with goodness, with beauty. And when we're flourishing on a spiritual level, that's when we're in union with God, when we're connected with God. And uh, God wants us to be happy, most definitely. But it's a happiness that is beyond just sentiments. It's, it's spiritual joy. It's union with God. And uh, what I try to do is show those elements of the self-help genre, which is so big these days, which is actually true, that we have natural mechanisms that can help us get more in line with God's plan for us, but also showing where that self-help genre um, comes up short, and then where the grace of God enters into our lives, especially, and I explain this in the book, through the theological virtues, what a lot of spiritual authors call the theological virtues of faith, of hope, and of love, and how to live living faith, living hope, and living love. So you're saying where the self-help ends, the God help kicks in? Most definitely. There's nothing, self-help is not a bad word, right. but unfortunately, the, much of the self-help industry has divorced itself from any connection with God, and that is a big lie. We cannot be happy. We cannot be the people God wants us to be, uh, fully happy. Um, without any connection to God, in my opinion. You are a Roman Catholic priest, correct? I am, yeah. What do you see uh, Protestants may be able to get out of this book? Is there mm -hmm. any kind of theological divide that, that might hinder yeah. them, or are you these just truths have, that are truths? We have so much in common. 
you know, the essential elements of our faith. I mentioned faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love in, in who? Mm -hmm. In Jesus Christ, right? It's not faith, hope, and love in the Pope. It's not faith, hope, and love in your local pastor. It's faith, hope, and love in the person of Jesus Christ. And I don't get into the theological differences that all of us have. I'm sure it comes from a certain perspective, which is mine, um, from my parents, from my church. But in the end, um, I try to help people say, uh, take steps to say, this is what living faith means in my life. This is what living hope means in my life. This is what living faith can mean in my life. And I think uh, based on all the emails and letters and all the rest, um, I, I believe that this is a book that can um, bless uh, Protestants, Catholics. It's blessed me, right? <laughs> and I wrote it. In other words, uh, God uses these things. And I explain in the book some really rough patches of my own life um, that God allowed me to experience even after having um, chosen uh, the love of God above worldly things. Um, and God wants us happy, but he allows suffering. Oh, that, that's good. Uh, a good topic, one I'm fully behind. Do you have a website where people can check out sort of uh, your, your people blog? People go to and, fatherjonathan.com. Fatherjonathan.com. Uh, but uh, in the end, open up your Bible. You'll probably find even better things. <laughs> Good advice. Be sure to check out his book, too. He may not want to plug it as much as I do, but I want people to check it out. God wants you happy. Father Jonathan Morris, thank you for spending a few minutes thank with you. us. My and pleasure. be sure to check him out on Life Today at lifetoday.org.